Hi, and welcome to this course where we are going to learn how we can create a Rails API application that uses authentication. So the use case for this is if you want to build out your own authentication from scratch, especially if you're building out authentication for a front end application. So if you want to add a registration and a sign in component to React or to Angular or Vue.js, then and this will walk through exactly how to do that. Now, we are going to be implementing HTTP only cookie authentication. There are two popular types of authentication. One is to use HTTP only cookies. The other is to use what are called JWT tokens. Now, I prefer to use HTTP only cookies mainly because it leads to a much more straightforward interface and API. With JWT tokens, you generate these randomized encrypted tokens and then both sides of the application have to do quite a bit of work to one, make sure that the token the tokens are still accurate and that they're still matching, that they haven't been hijacked and the front end application has to store it in local storage or something like that. And then the back end constantly has to check that. And it feels like that's not really the best fit, especially if you're a Rails developer. It, with Rails, you have the ability to utilize the session. And so what the session does, if you're familiar with MVC applications, you can store any Thing you want in a session, such as if a user is logged in or not. And what we can do with an API is actually take advantage of the same exact set of features. So we can use the session the same way we would with a traditional MVC app, even though it's an API. So we're going to walk through all of the steps needed in order to do that. In this guide, we're going to generate an application from scratch and we're going to add the dependencies needed for building our own authentication. And then we're going to configure that, that app to work. So let's get started. I'm going to create a new application here. So I'll say Rails new, and I'm just gonna call this authentication app. And it's going to use the database of Postgres. So while that is generating, we are going to be able to see all of the dependencies installing. This is just gonna give us our base app. Now you may notice I did not use the API only flag. Rails does have the ability to create a API only application. However, if you do that, you actually won't be able to use the session without be having to add more dependencies back in, which kind of kills the entire point of doing this. So I'm generating a regular application, just like a standard MVC app, but we're not going to use any of the views. We're going to treat it like an API only application. So now that that's been generated, let me jump into the authentication app and I'm going to start up Tmux here. These feature driven courses, I spend less time talking about things like my environment and really walking through every stage of syntax, because I assume if you're going through these that you're already a Rails developer, you're familiar with the syntax, and you're simply wanting to follow along and use this kind of like a recipe, a reference point for you to build your own features. So I'm going to first create the database. And then after that, we're going to add our two gems in. And while it's generating the database, we can go and I'm going to go to Ruby gems so that we're working with the right versions here. And I'm first going to pull in bcrypt. And let's say with bcrypt, it looks like it's at 3.1.1.2. So I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. And now let's open up the gem file. As you can see here on the right hand side, I am using Ruby 2.51. And you'll see in the gem file that we're using the Rails version 5.2.2. However, the concepts we're talking about in this guide are going to apply for quite a long time. None of the things we're talking about are going to be deprecated anytime soon. So even if you're watching this and you're building a Rails 6 application, this is going to apply to you. So I'm going to come down to the very bottom here. 
all add bcrypt and then one other gem is rack cores and so i'm going to say gem rack dash cores now with rack cores we're not pulling it in with a specific version instead we're simply just going to say require rack slash cores and let's save this close it run bundle to pull down all of those dependencies and now we can start building out our configuration so if you open up the file system you're going to want to add a couple files to your list of initializers you're going to want to add a cores file we'll talk about what that does when we build it out and then we also need a session store so neither of those are here right now so let's just create those files so i'm going to say touch and config initializers and the first one's going to be cores.rb and then we're going to create a session underscore store dot rb and now if i open up our initializers you can go to those files and start creating them so the first one is cores cores gives you the ability to whitelist certain domains because we're going to be passing secure cookies back and forth between the front end application and the back end application then we need to be able to use a tool called credentials and so what what's required with rails is that if you're going to use credentials and you're going to work with the session then you have to implement a tool like cores and give a specific set of rules for how you are going to be able to communicate and these rules are going to be defined in this initializer so the very first thing is we're going to set up rails dot application dot config dot middleware dot insert underscore before zero rack cores module and so all that's doing is it's saying that we're inserting a level of middleware here and we're using the cores module to do it and all of the rules that we place inside here are going to be intercepted by the rails config so we're saying at the very top of the chain we want to establish these rules because if a application tries to communicate with our system that's not authorized to do so and they're coming from a domain that we have not whitelisted we don't want to give them any access to the system so that's what we're setting up here we're going to create a allow block so i'm going to say allow do and then give an origin so i'll say origin and pass in a string the domain so the first one i'm going to do is for localhost so i'll say http colon slash slash localhost and then for me it's going to be 3000 now this is going to change depending on what kind of front end application you're working with and what port you're using. So if you're using Vue, then you're probably going to use localhost 8080. Or if you're using some specific type of React application that runs on a different port by default, you're going to use whatever port it runs on. So I'm going to say localhost 3000, and that is all we need to do for the origin. And now we have to list off the resources that are allowed. So I'm going to say resource and I want to allow all resources so resource with a star as a string and then for the headers we're going to allow any and then the list of methods we're going to allow these are the HTTP methods that we are going to define right here and we're going to say okay front-end application you are allowed to use get put patch etc and so these are the methods that are defined so I'll say get and then post put patch and then delete and two more that are important to put on here options and then head 
and then close off that array. So this is a array of symbols and it's just defining the methods that we're allowing obviously customize this to however your app is going to be using this. But for me, I wanted to give you the full set of options that you can give just so you have that. Now we have one more item to give here and it's gonna be credentials true. Now I have this zoomed in so it's easy to read the text, uh, but usually to have it zoomed out, it's all on one line. So credentials true, this is what is going to allow you to pass those headers back and forth and pass the cookie from your front end app to the back end app. So that is very important. If you do not put that there, it will not work. Okay, so I'm gonna do put that localhost one and now I'm just gonna comment this one, or I'm going to put this one here as kind of a placeholder, just so you can see. You need to not only have your local host environment, but you have to have the domain that you are going to be pushing this up to. I'm assuming your React application or your Angular app is going to be on a server somewhere and on a domain. Well, you need to allow it here. So for me, I'm going to say this is going to be on Heroku. So I'll say that the origins HTTPS and I'm going to call the app JDH dash and then let you can call it whatever you want. Authentication app react something like that and then dot heroku app.com obviously i just made all of that up but you get the idea this is where you're going to be putting the domain that your production app is going to be on now if you had a app and you wanted to have it on the www and have it without that you need to list all of those right here so this is where your production goes and that's all that's all you need to do so i'm going to get out of course and let's go to the session store so the session store is where we define what the cookie is going to be structured like so with session store we're going to say rails dot application dot config once again now we're going to configure the session store and then this is going to be the cookie store so we're saying that for sessions we're going to use cookies and then this takes in a few arguments the first one is going to be the key now the key is going to be the name of the session cookie so for this one i'm just going to call it something like authentication app and start it with an underscore. This is kind of the main convention that you'll see when you're naming these so that inside of the browser, when you go to an application, you'll see that this is stored in that client and it's named this. So that's the key. We also have to define the name or the domain. So for the domain, this is going to be a string and it's going to be whatever your domain is. So let's say that this app would be called or would be hosted on jdh-authentication-app-api.herokuapp.com. Now, obviously, that is another domain completely made up for the system I built for dev guides in order to be able to have authentication for it. This one was domain was api.devguides.com. So it's whatever the actual source application, the API application, it's what its domain is. So I'm going to save that and then let's just test this application out to make sure it's working. So we're going to have to go into our routes. Let's give a base root route. So I'll say root to and I'll say static home. So we just need to create a static controller here. So let me do that app controllers static controller dot rb and then class will be static controller which inherits from application controller and then we have just one route that will be home and i want to render some json so render json status it's working 
Okay, so let's test all of this out. I'm going to run the Rails server and we should be able to go to, oh, and it looks like we have a little error here. Oh yeah, undefined method origins. Uh, did you, or origin, did you mean origin? So that is just picking up at a little typo inside of cores. Config initializers cores. There we go, yeah, it should be origins on both of these. Okay, that's why we test it out and don't keep on writing more code. There we go. Okay, so that looks like it's working. Let's open this up. I'm gonna go to localhost 3000 and we should have some JSON returned to us. And yes, we do. So status, it's working. So we are all good to go. We have set up our application and we've given all of the key elements we need in order to implement authentication. And in the next guide, we're gonna do just that.